Tip one would be schedule it in and make it non-negotiable because if you have a long day at work or you've been getting some grief or you know your partner at home it will demotivate you you won't want to go to the gym or your fitness class but if it's scheduled in you make it non-negotiable make that pact to yourself to make it non-negotiable the power of that you, you just you won't believe because not only will it mean that you're getting to the gym and obviously you know you're gonna start seeing results because you've just turned up but it starts installing within you, ingraining in the psychology of your brain that you just get into that habit. It becomes second nature. It becomes part of your very being, who you are, that you do not miss it. Before you know it, you're doing it without thinking. You're not even having to talk yourself into going to the gym or having to motivate yourself. You just go. Just like when you wake up to go to work, some days you don't want to go, but you get up and you go. You don't even think twice about it, really, because it's ingrained within you because it's scheduled in. You know you've got to go. Make the gym or your fitness classes or whatever it is the exact same, okay? Non-negotiable, ingrained it in within you. Tip two, don't make radical changes to your diet. Everyone, when they start the journey, do it with all the greatest intentions. No one starts the journey of health and fitness or losing weight or whatever it is, thinking, yeah, I'm not really bothered. They all want to achieve the goals, but not everyone does. And in my experience, because people make too big a radical changes. So if I was to give you an example, let's say during the week, people like in the evenings like to eat their chocolates and some biscuits and you know crisps. Don't go cutting all that out at once. Just reduce it to two, three nights. So then you know when that night's coming around. And then after a month of doing that, take one more night away. And then a month after that, just make it to one night a week and allow that if you want or don't. That's your choice. When you get there, you'll know. You'll decide whether you want to have that one night a week. But if you go and make too big a radical change, not only will you psychologically find it hard to adapt to, but also if you make two radical changes to your nutrition, there's adaptations that need to go on with inside your body that you can't even see. Digestive enzymes, the way the body works, breaks down foods, because if you eat particular foods, your body's set up to utilize those foods. If you completely change it to a different foods, then your body has to adapt to that as well. That so both psychologically and physiologically, it's not great to make radical changes. So we'll make small incremental changes and over a long period of time, we'll see a great big difference. If you fall off the wagon, get over it. Everybody falls off the wagon. Not everybody has got infinite willpower. Some freak of natures are, but you know, they not, they're normally performing on world level stages, okay? But even then, they'll have some naughty treats or whatever, okay? So if you fall off the wagon, have a binge, have a big night out, you don't wake up the next day feeling sorry for yourself and go, ah, oh, screw it, I might as well just eat everything. I'm gonna eat the kids' sweetie cupboard and yeah, it, it's all gone now. And get over it. Put it behind you and crack back on with the diet. In actual fact, psychologically, it's probably done you some good. Just have that little blowout, get back on it. I love a little blowout every now and then. Pizzas, Krispy Kremes, whatever. I'll nail them, have a great sleep because I'm having a car crash the next day, wake up a little bit lethargic, but enjoy the experience back on the diet, okay? So just get over it and get back on it. tip would be get a gym buddy or a personal trainer the point is be accountable to somebody if you're going into the gym on your own winging it a little bit there's just no accountability there you know from whether it's at school or work when someone stood over you or in your presence you do step it up that little bit extra okay? you don't want to disappoint them or you don't want to look in theater or, or whatever in front of that person okay? so having a gym buddy who's on a very similar path to you means you're both accountable to each other so that day when they're not quite feeling like they can get on get in here to the gym you give them a kick up the backside and they do the same to you okay so get a gym buddy or invest your money into a personal trainer which is actually the preferred option okay <laughs> My 
final tip would be don't overcomplicate exercises. You see loads of people in the gym doing all these fancy, complicated exercises, you know, attaching belts to them and jumping around like idiots. Google re and research compound exercises, okay? Keep it simple, stupid. Big compound movements are the key to the greatest anabolic effects, the greatest fat burning movements, okay? Using a lot of muscles in a singular movement is by far, hands down, the best for achieving um, fat loss, strength, health, the whole package. If you start isolating and complicating exercises, you should be doing that if you're in the very, very small percentage where you're so lean you can see your pancreas. You're so lean you can see the laceration in all the muscles, okay? Them kind of athletes um, and gym goers are the ones that really can justify isolating exercises or you know mixing it up with complicated exercises. Don't complicate things, keep it simple. Do deadlifts, do press-ups, do chin-ups, do clean presses, that kind of thing. The big compound movement, keep it simple, okay?